Welcome to Doctrine and Devotion. There you go. A podcast exploring Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective. My name is Joe Thorne. I'm the lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. And I'm Jimmy Fowler, elder candidate at Redeemer Fellowship. So what is this one airing? Do you even know? Uh, yes. You have to look it up. Uh, no, I just got a text. But, uh... So you do have to look it up. I look it up well, yeah, of course. I don't, know, I don't know every single place where it's you at. You don't know any place where it's at. I don't know any place obviously. where it's at. Obviously. This one is on July 31st. Ooh, end of July. End of July. I will actually be away. Oh, yeah. Again. No, I just get back. I just get back. Another I'll be... Another vacation. It's I'll like be, your fifth vacation. I'll, no, Houston. I'll be in Houston speaking. Oh, like that's not a vacation. How? Oh, you're going to get Shipley's Donuts? I don't know. Oh, Probably. yes, you are. All right, I guess I All am. right, listen... Uh, you will have had by now. You will have had Shipley's mm. glazed donuts. Okay, I'm sure they're going to be great. Oh no, <laughs> I'm already actually. People have been they're better than great. Yeah, people have been uh, hitting me up about getting together in Houston. So I've got a few hours to spare. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm obviously going to need a cigar or two. Oh yeah, and Shipley's donuts, and, and I guess Shipley's donuts. And so Whataburger. Yeah. And oh, Whataburger. I love Whataburger. Yeah. Oh, I love a Whataburger with uh-huh. jalapenos. Uh-huh. Oh, and then, I used to have right, it as a so kid all the time. Have um, uh, Wong, must mm-hmm. Mr. Wong, get you. Dr. Wong, yeah. D- DW. Uh, have uh, have him get, get you uh, Shipley's Donuts for breakfast. And mm-hmm. he'll bring you some, like, I think they're called kolachkis. Uh, they're all right. The donuts are legit. Do that. All right. All right. Well, anyways. Shout out to all of the Shipley's people out there. We love your donuts. If somebody oh. wants to send us some Shipley's donuts. So. <laughs> oh, really? Are you serious? You can't get them up here. We got right. Dunkin' Donuts. We got for Dunkin' Donuts. Out. But okay. Dunkin's all right. Terrible. Anyways. All right. All right. All right. It's terrible. So yeah, you would have been. Uh, you'd be back from your vacation. I'm back from my vacation. You're back. Not from yet, your but I will be. When you this will airs. be when this yeah. airs. I haven't even left yet. No, nope. you leave tomorrow. Oh my gosh, I got so much to do. I'm gonna miss you. No, you're gone for two weeks, which yeah. is two and a half weeks, basically three. No, first of basically all, basically three. I'm gone for two weeks. Not, no, not even over two. No, not nope. even by one day. No, no, no. Two weeks flat. Two and a half weeks. Nope. Two weeks. That's flat. basically three weeks. I, I would agree. That's basically, I would agree. That's basically, I would agree. Basically three weeks. I would agree if we, I was staying. Yeah. But I'm, I will oh, not be gone mm, for more than two weeks. Mm, It'll be exactly. Yeah, two we weeks. all don't have the uh, the JoJo lifestyle. You're gone for two and a half weeks when you go. When I go, when I go, I'm gone for two weeks. Over. I'm gone for ten days, maybe. Yeah, eight days, seven days. Wait, no, you're two about wait. four days on average is when seven I'm seven and seven is fourteen. You're gone for more than fourteen days. No, I'm gone for ten days. No, sixteen. Yeah, there you go. I got to look at it. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I remember way, you remember you I were do coming remember. down. You oh. forgot all about me. Just like I'm going to forget all about you. While well, I'm gone. I hope so because uh, I'm just going to be having a good time in North Carolina. Yeah, you go have that good time. I'll be here with Steve McCoy. I've Steve already got. I. I've already got a, a whole giant thing of cigars packed and ready to go nice that's gonna be good <laughs> that's gonna be good all right so all right, joe what gotta, are we gonna talk about today i know uh, we gotta we gotta, gotta get, get finished we got, up. i gotta get going dude i know I that's pack, what i'm gonna say i, gotta pack, I know gotta, you, you haven't packed yet no well no well hold on jen hasn't packed yet i don't know that's what that look was the look on joe's packed. face was I, look, all <laughs> i bring are t-shirts and one pair of jeans that's all i own that's all i own i just it's like i'm good okay then so are why are you not done you know she likes to organize it so let me get this straight you don't have any clothes yet, but you got the, you made sure the cigars oh, are I ready to go. I pack my cigars, yeah. Uh-huh. See, I pack. There mm. you go. I do pack. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy, for coming to my defense. Yeah, you're welcome. We're going to talk about the Ninth Commandment ninth today. Ninth Commandment. Oh, yeah. you all know, you all have it memorized, you yep. shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Mm. It's easy, Good. right? Well, I mean, it's easier said than done. Well, it just means don't lie. Don't lie. That's all it means. That's all it means. Just stop it. But, just but tell people truth. think it's all about lying, but... There's more to it, though, Joe. I think you and I would both agree, and so yeah. would Watson. Yeah, definitely. You know, don't bear false witness um, is a is really a pregnant statement. Um, and in one sense, you know, Watson's going to say that there's a there's a prohibition here, mm-hmm. um, but then there is a positive command as well. We'll talk about that positive command, that implication later. But for now, the prohibition to uh, not bear false witness means two things for Watson. And again, if you haven't picked up Thomas Watson's treatment of the Ten Commandments. Be sure and do that. Get it. If you're just now tuning in and you're like, wait a minute, what are we talking about Watson? Go to DoctrineAndDevotion.com. Find the most recent post. Click, uh, or not the most recent, find this one. And uh, <laughs> click on uh, the uh, the link to Thomas Watson's Ten Commandments online. Click on Ninth Commandment and follow along. Now, what he says is the prohibition forbids slander, 
and lying in general, right? Yep. So by slander, what does he mean, Jimmy? He's talking about re, like reporting on things of others, like talking about other people unjustly. Exactly. So it's 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 you can talk about other people. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and sometimes you have to say hard things about other people. Sometimes it's necessary. Yeah. Right. In a court of law, it might be necessary to say some things about somebody that you know is uh, maybe might hurt their reputation. Um, at other times, it might be hard, but you might in a church discipline situation, you might have to say something about yeah, someone. That's right. That uh, might expose their their weakness or their sin. But what Watson is saying is you are slandering somebody when you are talking about another person when it is inappropriate, when it is unjust, unfair, or unwarranted. This is uh, this puts a lot of people on notice right here. Oh, yeah. Put, but this puts all of us on notice. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because we like talking about those preachers who are doing it wrong mm-hmm. and when it, it's not always really relevant for us to be blasting another. No, no. We like to... Uh, I, I, I'm not saying tear other people down, but I think we we try to bring them down a notch, or at least in some way, just a notch. Yeah, just we a all notch like that. Our, we all like to go ahead and say so. We all think, you know, we all like to furtick it. We all like to talk about that, right? Like, yeah. how did furtick do the, do it this time? Furtick with his slide. Yeah, we, we've made that joke. We've made that. Slide. And you know what? We've been called out for that. Yeah, we haven't called out. We haven't called out for that. We haven't stopped doing it though. Uh, some people haven't. In this podcast. Well, like you definitely haven't. Well, like some people haven't. Yeah. So some people might have said it, I don't know, maybe like a, a two episodes ago. Uh, that'd probably be me. <laughs> <laughs> but, but but the reality is, is um, you know, you, and again, I need to be open to that. I actually really do need to be, you know, able to evaluate myself. Mm-hmm. Are the things that I'm saying about others, is it necessary? That's right. Is it helpful? Yes. Is it uh, appropriate? And is it even correct? Absolutely. I mean, boy. Is it even correct? Slander can be a lie. Yeah. It can be a misrepresentation. Yeah. Or it can be true. That's right. Just because it's true doesn't mean it's not slander. That's right. I, even I like the illustration that Watson uses here. What's that? Uh, the scorpion carries his poison in his tail. The slanderer carries his poison in his tongue. You know, there's a saying around. Yeah, Redeemer. here it goes. There's a saying around Redeemer. Yeah, that Joe's the uh, uh, scorpion. That's it. Like the scorpion. That's that's the that's saying. that's the yeah, saying scorpion. is one word scorpion. Yeah, because. Um, you know, people wonder why I do the things I do, like the bad things, <laughs> the mean, the tell mean them. things. Tell them. Well, you I basically, tell, tell them the story. at some point, I have to explain, I have to tell people the, the it's actually fable. Usually, this is also, you know, this is actually during orientation. So we try to tell people ahead of time what you're going to well, get yeah, this is, when you get the Joe Thorne. Mostly it's in leadership development. But what I explain to people, I tell them the fable of the scorpion and the frog. Mm. So the scorpion, you know, is hanging out uh, on the banks of this stream and he wants to get to the other side. But he can't because he's a scorpion. You know, he can't like swim. So he says, hey, frog, why don't you let me get on your back and you can get me to the other side of this stream? And the frog's pretty smart. The frog's no dumb. And he's like, no way. You will sting me with your scorpion tail because you're a scorpion. If I put you on my back, so I'm not going to do it. And the scorpion's like, what's wrong with you? Why would I do I'm not going to do that. That's crazy. You haven't done anything wrong. Why would I sting you? Just give me a ride. So the frog, because he's nice, he's like, all right, I'll give you a ride. So hop on. You promise you're not going to sting me? He's like, of course I promise I'm not going to sting you. What's wrong with you? So he gets on the frog's back, and the frog gets him all the way to the other side. And then, sure enough, scorpion stings the frog. And mm-hmm. before the frog dies, he's like, what the heck, dude? You said you weren't going to sting me. And the frog's like, and the scorpion's like, yeah, uh, I'm a scorpion. <laughs> yeah, you should have known better. <laughs> what you expect? What you expect <laughs> was going to happen? So, yeah, uh, I'm a scorpion. Yeah. Um, so slander, right? You could mm-hmm. be saying a lie, or you could be saying something that is true, but it's just not helpful. It's not necessary. It's not needed. So uh, put that away. Otherwise, you are bearing false witness. So there's slander, but there's also lying. Yeah, speaking, witnessing, swearing uh, are kind of the three ways that Watson talks about there when he talks about lying. So okay. like a flat out lie, uh, speaking that which is false, just saying so and so did oh, something. I got an example. Oh no, I I've got an you example. You got an example. I've got an example. When you said that Furtick no, no, had no. a water slide to I never go said, into, I never the, said that. Yeah, Babylon B did, and you thought you shared it all no, around I didn't. the okay, internet. You're definitely as, lying. Don't listen. You're confused. <laughs> you're lying right now, and that is what we're talking about. So, like for example, recently, mm, not too long ago, not too long ago, uh, you were telling people that I always had three buttons on three buttons on my button down shirt. Three buttons. But I only ever have two on average. The very three. top one. But can I and say the next one? But can I say on average three? No. Why not? Why can't I say that? That would be inaccurate. Oh, would, but Joe, you said that all the time. Are you saying that's inaccurate? Of course. I, everybody knows I'm inaccurate when it comes to math. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so I only, I only have two buttons done. And yes, the top, like the, the, the top, top three. tuft 
of my chest one of those. pops out. I can't help that. I can't help that. That's just the way God built me. Mm, so, the Hasselhoff yeah. effect. So God made me this way. All right. Anyway. Um, so lying, you can speak or you can witness, Watson says, right? So what does he mean by witnessing there? Uh, that which well, is false. Are you talking about like just... It says it right in the command. You shouldn't have your false witness. <laughs> Jeez. So saying All something right. about another? No. He says bearing false witness for another person as when we give our testimony for a person who is yeah. a criminal or guilty. So when you defend somebody who is wrong, like listen, your friends... Like, I've seen this. Like, I've seen this in, in Acts 29. I've seen it in the Southern Baptist Convention. I've seen it among other pastors. They will defend their friends even when their friends are totally wrong. You are now bearing false witness by defending somebody who is wrong and not defending them in the sense of like, well, I want to give them a fair shake. You're saying like, I'm going to lie for them basically. Okay. So that's the difference. So like, I mean, I would, I would defend you. You know that. I would defend you. Have, in you. fact, you do. I do. Because I'm Scorpion. But I wouldn't I wouldn't say I wouldn't lie. I guess that's what it is. The difference no. is you can Dude. defend your you can defend someone and say, well, hold on, X, Y, and Z is if, true. If I committed adultery, you would you would be all over that. You would be like, all right, Joe, we're gonna walk you through this. Yes. And that, and if it but then on social media, you're asking what I would say there in public? Is that no, what you No, no, no. I'm just saying like there's a difference between saying like I'm going to be. Your I wouldn't cover. Friend. I wouldn't cover up your adultery. Right. That's what I wouldn't do. Or like if I, and it, and it, what what would you do if I hit my wife? Uh, I would call the cops, and then I'd beat the crap out of you. You should do it in the opposite order, by the way. Uh, uh no, because I want to make sure the cops get there in time before I kill you. Yeah, but still, you won't no. get a chance. No, I'm going to get the chance. No. I'm going to get both. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have both. Oh, you, here's what. You, let me explain. Let me break it down for you. Look, you're going to break it down. Gonna you're going to beat me up. I'm gonna, no, no, no. I'm going to tell you how to get around it. So you um you beat me up. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then you call 911 and you're like, hey, this guy's going crazy. He's trying to beat me up. And but isn't then, that, that you? That's very then, false witness. Yeah, but it's worth it when you're beating up a wife beater. <laughs> no? Is that, that's is still that not very false, false witness? No, I'll still right. call the cops. Then I'll beat you up. All right. At least you're out in the open and you're honest about it. I'm honest about All right, it. So. Um, so you can bear false witness for another person. Dude, I'd be so mad. I'd hate you. I'd be well, no, that, so and that's mad the thing. at you. And, and here's the truth is like, we all love each other genuinely here. That's why we would be so hurt for others. If one of us was hurting another person yeah. and we would not shy away no. from dealing with the problem. So you can, no, we've even said that to each other, right? Like, oh, don't, yeah. don't play around. We don't know. We don't have around. time for that. No. My marriage is too important. My kids are too important. This church is too don't, important. Don't sugarfoot it. Don't sit Wait, there. Sugarfoot. Yeah, I had like, <laughs> I had like, I had like, I had two different illustrations in my head, <laughs> and I blended them to I like, one. I like. So this is how I it works. Blended there, them there is so no getting well. away with anything at here over here. Like we will, like, sugarfoot. You know? <laughs> but see, sugar yeah. coat. You mean sugar? You sugar coat. I, I took can, two can, different things. You can pussy and, foot it, can, or you can sugar coat it. See, no, I see. I, I melded them to to avoid certain words <laughs> for our listeners. This is awesome. All right. So you can bear false witness for a person, right? Mm-hmm. Which is, you know, basically saying they're innocent when they're not. But then there is um, swearing to that, which is false. What are, we, what are we talking about there? Yeah, he says, uh, when men take a, take a false oath and by that take away the life of another, let no false oath, uh, that's in Zechariah 8. Uh, it says love no false oath. Love, sorry, love no false oath. So I think... Uh, Maybe is this? Are we talking about like lying on the stand? Like I mean, I think yeah. That's anytime we lying swear, in a way that someone else is going to reap, uh, they're going to get the repercussions for your actions for your lie. So I guess saying, "Hey, this person did this." Yeah, that's one manifestation. I think there's there's a broader implication here, like because there was a problem. This is why Jesus said, "Hey, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Stop it with all the swearing." Like because people would be like, "Oh, I swear to God," and then they wouldn't do it. Or they would, or they would swear like, "Oh, I swear by the moon and the stars." That way, they're not invoking God's name, and then they would break it because I didn't swear to God. I swear by the moon and the stars in the sky. I don't know the lyrics because I'm not a. I'll be there. Weirdo. I'll be there for yeah. better or worse. See, I don't till need death do us part. Oh, I'll love dang. you with like, every beat of my heart. Beat of my I just heart. Good guess because it was so I cheesy. Swear. All right, who sings that? I don't know. Oh, stop No, it. I really don't know. You know every, every word in the song? <laughs> you know who sung it? Yes, you do. It's got to be a Take boy a band. No. 
Really? It's right. got to be. All right, so take a guess. I can hear like three. Google it right now while right. we're moving on. All right, keep going. This is terrible. You just ruined our podcast with no. a stupid <laughs> boy band song. Is it about boy band? Of course. Don't even pretend you said No, it's got to be. I'm song. trying to think which one it is. Yeah, all for, all for one. Yeah. Wait, what? All for one. That's it a, is a, it's a boy band. I it's swear. It's a boy band I've never heard of? It's by All for One. Then no way. It's got to be like Contemporary boys. R&B. That's how cool I am. That's how cool I am. Your contemporary R&B? Yeah, back in the 90s. Hmm. Uh, 1994. All right, can we, we move away from the boy band thing or whatever it is? And whatever. I'm just right. saying it's a, I'm, I'm, I'm down with all it. All right. So there, there are prohibitions against slander mm-hmm. and against lying. Yes. Now, why is this even an issue? Why can't people just keep their mouths shut? Why can't people just do what they're supposed to do? And, and don't say because we're sinners. I, okay. We're, we're sinners, but yeah. you got to explain, you got to give me more than that. We, why do people struggle with this particular commandment? And think of all the things that God could have said. One of them is, hey, don't bear false witness, be- obviously because we have a problem with this. So why do we struggle with this? Well, I mean, again, yes, because of sin, because we're sinners. I told you not to do that. I know. But well, it's do true, that. though. It's true. Okay, the heart. True. Say more. Oh, because of the heart. So okay. out of the overflow of the heart, though, the mouth speaks. So we talk right. about the tongue. Yes. And then you look at James. James James Brown. 3. Oh, James 3. James Sorry. <laughs> Get down. <laughs> yeah, get down. Get on up. Get on up. All right. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness, for we all stumble in many ways. And if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle his whole body. So that it's that word bridle. Mm-hmm. If we put bits into the mouth of horses so that they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the ships also. They, Though they are so large and are... S- driven by strong winds they are guided by a very mm-hmm. small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs so also the tongue is a small member yet it boasts of great things how yeah. great a force is set ablaze by such a small fire and the tongue is a fire a world of unrighteousness yeah man that's great i mean i, I clearly the tongue is one of the hardest most difficult um issues right, yeah. in our lives because the most you know the most disciplined of people who are polite and who are you know socially aware and they're non-violent and all these things when they get with their friends they can start gossiping yeah and it will be received well and they're not really doing and they're not, maybe they're not saying anything that's not true no we're just talking but they can really damage people's reputation really that's hurt right. people so and the reason we all struggle with this is like you said jimmy like and uh, because there is a, a spiritual darkness in each of our hearts yes. that is directly connected to our tongues, and this is very difficult to control. And so, but then we let's get then the the implication though behind all this, right? Right, is to not not bear false witness means to stand up for others when injured by lying lips. Right. So, this is the beauty of the ninth commandment. I love the ninth commandment, and. Um, I love it because it challenges me not only to restrain my tongue, but also to like activate my tongue. Mm. Like, like I've got to. Like, some, you're right. Sometimes you've got to shut your mouth and not say a thing, but other times you got to speak up. And sometimes you have to speak up for people that you might not want to stick up for. Because if somebody is being lied about, if somebody is being slandered, whether you like them or not, whether mm-hmm. they are your friend or your opponent. You have a responsibility to speak the truth and to stand up for them because of the ninth commandment. That's the ninth right. commandment. It's easy for us. It's easy for us to stand up for our friends. It's oh, easy yeah. for us to go ahead and stand up. Like it's easy for me to stand up for Joe. I mean, I'll stand up for Joe. I'll stand up for yeah. Pastor Pat. I'll stand up for. You also for stand Brian. on my neck though sometimes. Uh yes, yeah. yes. You I will do that too. I to you keep stand you, up for me and you'll stand on me. Yeah, to keep you in your place. Yeah. And so it's easy though to do those things to stand up for our friends to stand up for those on our same team, whether it be politically, whether it be theologically. Uh, you know, we want people to stay. We we want to stand up for our side because our side we want to look better. So right. it's okay for us to go ahead, or at least in our minds, uh, to stay silent when it comes to other people who have differing views than us. Right. So you know, when um, when somebody says, you know, to a theological opponent of yours. Um, so like a theological opponent, like we would be friends in terms of, you know, the essence of the gospel and the nature of the scripture, but obviously SBC or Southern Baptist traditionalists, um, and, and reformed Southern Baptists are on different ends of a theological spectrum. 
But when somebody, if somebody were to say, hey, those Calvinists are not even Christians, those people are heretics, then it would be incumbent upon the traditionalists to say, whoa, 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 whoa. Now, theologically, we're at odds at certain points, but they are yeah. our brothers and our sisters in Christ. And That's I know right. that they do that. The good ones at, certainly yes. do that. And the same goes for the Calvinists. Calvinists, if they are good Calvinists, they would stand up for any SBC traditionalist and say, they are our brothers and our sisters in Christ. And although we disagree, we know that they love Jesus and we love Jesus and they love the, lo- love the word and we love the word. And so we can work together uh, as, as much as possible. And we would defend them if they are being accused of something that's not true. Mm-hmm. And it's, tr- it's true for politically. Like, listen, just because... You hate Hillary Clinton's uh, pol- politics uh, doesn't mean that everything that's said about her online is true. That's and right. And just because you find Trump to be an embarrassing uh, president for our country doesn't mean that everything that's said about him online is true. And one of the things, and Ed Stetzer has actually done quite a bit of writing on this, um, we need to be careful as Christians not to be gullible idiots and share fake news stories all yeah. over the place for anybody, right? Whether it's about our, our president or our presidential candidates or other politicians or just news stories about how, like, well, you know, some Christian was uh, kicked out of the movie theater for wearing a Christian T-shirt, and you do a little digging and you find out it never happened. Uh, be careful what you share on Facebook. Be careful what you repost, what you, what you tweet, and all of that, because um, you might be bearing false witness. Yeah. But certainly the implication here, like like you're saying, Jimmy, is, and like Watson says, is if we are people of truth, if we are the people of God, then we love truth, and we want to make sure that, that the truth wins, so that even when uh, people who might be our opponents in some way are being vilified unjustly, that we will stand up for them. Absolutely. No, it, that's what we need to be doing. So if we are followers of Christ, then we care about the truth which means we're going to sometimes um, say hard things when it's necessary, but we're also going to know that um, sometimes there are are situations in which it is best for us to be quiet because this is not a necessary thing to share. You might be privileged to something that is not suitable for public consumption, Mm -hmm. and therefore you need to chill out and restrain it in. So you definitely are about truth, but you are also about prudence. You're also about mercy. And the ninth commandment compels us to both, not bearing false witness against our neighbors. Big thanks to Justin Bond of J Bond Media, the audio audio visual wizard wizard of Doctrine Devotion. If you got any audio visual photography needs, (laughs) jbondmedia.com and he will hook you up. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Doc and Devo or on Facebook slash Doctrine and Devotion. Uh, you can head on to the website, doctrinedevotion.com. There you can contact us. You can sign up for our email blast. Uh, or you can hit up the store. and Or, yeah, we get the emails when Joe finally, uh, you know, puts you things out You didn't write it. an article last week either. Hey, for two weeks you haven't. You haven't. No, three weeks you haven't. No, you were due you last week. You missed one. I did one. And you were due this week. No. Yeah, you got you, it wrong. Look it up. I'll look it look up. Look it up. You're, you're two behind, I'm one behind. Yeah, we're, we're both behind is yeah, the point. But it's you're two, the, I'm one. I'm not keeping track of who's more behind. I, I am I'm keeping just saying, track. Like, I'm waiting for you to yours so I can start I got mine. mine ready to go. Well, then make sure you get it up on Wednesday on time. I'll be on vacation. Oh, so you're not going to get it on time. Probably not. Probably not. I'll, I'll get it. We'll see. You can hit up the store, grab yourself some merchandise. Fresh Pod every Monday and Thursdays. Fresh whenever, hot. Well, whenever Joe Fresh hot. puts them up. Or blog hot posts hot. on Wednesdays whenever Joe puts them up. Have a good week. Later. Whatever. Later. Whatever. Later. 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 Later.